This chapter is about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the process of figuring out how much stuff you either make or need in order for a reaction to occur. In order to do the calculations involved with stoichiometry, you first have to have a balanced equation. That's really important. There's some stuff you need to already know before you can carry out these calculations. Um, the definitions, you must know the definitions. I have posted some links to some flashcards for you to practice these definitions. And make sure that you don't just know the definitions, but that you understand them. And that will help you get about half of the multiple choice questions right. You also have to know how to balance equations. If you don't already know how to balance equations, then you should follow some of the links to review those. You also need to know how to write equations given the words, such as hydrogen gas and oxygen gas combined to uh, make water. Now that will be important if you are not already given a balanced equation. In many of the problems you will be given a balanced equation and then you won't have to write it. But in case you're not given a balanced equation you do need to know how to write the equation. You also need to know how to write the formulas. This is something that you'll need to know all year in chemistry. If you haven't already learned it you need to go back and learn that. In order to write formulas, you also have to have those polyatomic ions memorized. Things like nitrate and carbonate and hydroxide. If you don't have those memorized, you really, really, really have to go back and do that. You need to know both their formulas and their charges. And you need to understand that when you're balancing an equation, you don't change the numbers um, in the subscripts of a polyatomic ion. For example, nitrate is NO3 and nitrate is always NO3. Um, you can't change that 3 in nitrate because then it's not nitrate anymore. You also need to know the charges, the common charges of monatomic ions. For example, that uh, potassium is plus 1 and calcium is plus 2. And again, if you don't know those, you need to go back and learn those. And you need to know the symbols of the elements. It's also important to know how to change from grams to moles and moles to grams, although we'll review that as we go through the steps for stoichiometry. Now, for stoichiometry problems, there's a set of instructions, and if you follow these, then you can work the problems. And so it's important to learn these steps, and we're going to go through the steps one by one. The first step is to write or obtain a balanced equation. If you're lucky, you'll just be given the balanced equation, or maybe you'll be given an equation and then you have to balance it. If you're given the equation in word format, you'll have to write the balanced equation first. You can't do these without a balanced equation. The next step is to take the number they give you in the problem, and if it's already in moles, fine. If it's not in moles, you have to change grams to moles. So this step, change grams to moles, you can skip that if you already have moles, but the main idea is you have to have moles. The next step is to multiply by the mole ratio. Now the mole ratio comes from the balanced equation, and we'll talk more about that later, but that is a key step in stoichiometry problems. The last step is to change moles to grams. If the problem asks for grams, then you need to get grams. If the problem asks for moles, then you already have moles and you don't have to do that step. So let's go through these steps. Obtain or write a balanced equation. Number one. Number two, change grams to moles. Number three, multiply by the mole ratio. Number four, change moles to grams. Now, when can you skip step two? You can skip step two if you are given moles. When can you skip step four? When you have to find moles.